Okay, we are good to go. It, it does feel like a Monday, but it is. It is Tuesday, February 20th at 10 o'clock, and this is City Council work session, and we, um, we hold these as an opportunity for council and staff to talk about upcoming things that might appear before council. Um, these are not our formal city council meetings um, in, in the sense that there is no votes taken at a work session and there therefore is no opportunity for public comment. But we do record these and provide them um, and the public can certainly watch them. It's a great way to find out what's going on at the city prior to a city council meeting. Okay, so it looks like we are going to start right in on, um, we have two discussion items this morning. Um, the first is uh, moving Montrose forward surface treatment contract change order. And I'll turn it over to city engineer, Scott Murphy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so yeah, this is the first of several uh, contract recommendations that will be coming forward on the whole kind of moving Montrose forward street maintenance umbrella. Um, the first is the surface treatment contract. Um, so, you know, within each year we try and do, surface treatments are our most cost effective uh, kind of street maintenance strategy. It's uh, the whole thing, it's cheaper to paint your house than to replace your siding kind of thing. So this is us painting our house. Um, the work that gets done are chip seals, slurry seals, um, and cape seals, which is, a, which is a chip and a slurry. Um, we do slurries mostly in neighborhoods because um, people don't like chip seals and without all the tire traffic to kind of beat in a chip seal, they don't work as well in a, in a residential neighborhood. Um, so the, most of what's done are slurry seals as the ultimate surface when this is all said and done. Um, the work for the surface treatment stuff follows the zones for the most part. Um, so the city's broken up into and gyms out this week, but I think it's seven or eight different zones. Um, and within those, you know, they'll try and get the crack sealing and the patching done and uh, ahead of the service treatments then coming in. Um, and so we're at that step of the cycle. So that, you know, within a given zone, you may see four years of work going on as kind of those different phases kind of phase through the city and then you get to the end and you, and you start back over. Um, a really cool uh, thing to see, we were very pleased to see this. Um, we kind of compiled all this this year of, of where the surface treatments are going, which in this case are the green and the red. Um, but the yellow lines are past projects. Um, and that's either um, re rebuilds, overlays, um, slurry seals, cape seals, you know, significant treatments to a road. Um, and you can kind of see it follows the zone lines for the most part. And um, we are trying to paint the town and we almost got the town painted. <laughs> um, so by no means can we, you know, take our foot off the gas because when we get to the end of this, you know, a couple more years we'll have every street has been touched, which has been our goal, um, but there's still a lot more to do. You know, the ones we started, even some of the stuff we started when MoveMo started back in 2018 is ready for surface treatments. And you'll see that in one of the Hillcrest ones here. Um, and so it is something, you know, ideally we truly, you know, when we, we get to where we want to be, we get the roads built and rebuild the really bad ones in a, in a perfect world. Um, it gets easier because we're only doing surface treatments for the most part. Again, it's our most cost effective way. So, um, you're, again, I think down at Public Works, we're very proud of this map. It's, it's more street maintenance than's ever been done um, in that short amount of time. And, you know, we're going to continue on that trajectory. Um, so, for this year, the focus, the zone focus is this kind of core southern original town plat area here. So, most of the surface treatments and Cape seals and chip seals are, are within this kind of core boundary. Um, a lot of the roads that aren't highlighted were either, or some were done. There's so much work to be done in this zone that we've been chipping away, you know, onesie twosie streets here and there um, each year as part of other move mow projects, just so that it doesn't all hit at once and you create gridlock and tear up every single street. Um, uh, but also the, the next product that'll come before you will be the street maintenance contract and this if it's not highlighted here, a lot of those are getting um, mill and overlays or overlays or rebuilds. Um, and that'll be a separate contract that comes forward. But we do, we do this one first because the scope is pretty easy to define and we know what 
um, costs are going to be so then we know how much to build our budget to for the, the future contract that'll come in a couple weeks for for street maintenance so um, did I understand can I just make sure I understand what you just said which is these red and green streets are showing what we're gonna do for just the um, slurry seal and the cape seal but there are additional streets that will get a whole nother treatment and we'll see that coming up 100%. Yep. so for example if I see a street on here that I think isn't is in poor condition but isn't red or green it's because it might be getting something else next yep and okay. we got that project out. I'll just give you a, it wasn't in the packet but I'll give you a quick preview um, the that product is out to bid right now um, we got it out on Thursday night Friday morning I guess um, and I'll show you the streets that that includes because I think no matter how much red and green and yellow you have on a map we all go to look for a specific street. <laughs> exactly like, yeah like why not mine that, yeah. Well, yeah and not even mine but how why not this stretch which I think you know could use some work and so I think understanding that there's a more comprehensive look yeah so in this case the purples are rebuilds and the blues are mill and overlays of what's coming um, so uh, the, probably the biggest and most impactful will be South Fifth from Townsend to uh, San Juan yeah. um, and uh, essentially every street you see there South first second or second third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth I think are in this plan um, and then you know a couple of rebuilds so like Nevada was the one that um, was at the tail end of last year's so we were trying to chip away at this year's but they ran out of time and so Nevada's on there as a rebuild um, lot up near town or up near uh, Main Street um, is on there as a rebuild and uh, you know we'll, there's a whole lot of um, evals that go into how this is set up and I'll kind of dive into that deeper when we come to that contract but just to show you um, between those two we are hitting most of this zone which is great and a, it's a one of our biggest zones because it's got the oldest streets. Yep. Um, so Scott, um, just kind of, wow, this is very high. Um, <laughs> so the evaluation of the streets isn't based purely on zone, it's also based on condition of streets. So if that, oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that it isn't just a pure, you know, this is the zone to go to, but if there's a, so if there's streets outside of this, yep. or that require more extensive work, that is in a different Yeah, way. and I'll speak to that, yeah. So generally we want to try and take, of the available budget, we want to put a fair amount of those dollars I think at least 30 percent or so into surface treatments just because it's the most cost effective but we don't want to do just that you know we want to repair some of the, the roads that have gone over the edge and, and are too far gone and need a larger rehab but we want to keep the good roads good because it's the most cost effective way to do it so within the zones and the zones are kind of mostly geared towards you know just kind of creating a eventually a you know conveyor belt of maintenance you know that as you just continually systematically work your way across town um, but within that, there's still um, a lot of judgment based on the PCI data, which is the pavement condition index, uh, street maintenance data of like where are we having to go, where are our problems, where are we, you know, we don't want to put a pothole on the same patch 20 times. We want to fix that patch kind of thing. Um, and a lot of that's directed by streets of, you know, we sit down between streets and engineering and um, I mean, even to some degree council at, at budget time to really say here's where we're going and here's what we intend to do this year and then just get more and more granular as we get deeper into the design um, and available budget to figure out what the most cost effective treatment is at the right place at the right time kind of thing um, and it looks like on the MoveMo website there is those maps are combined to show all the work being done in 2024 on yep. whether it's surface treatment or a rebuild correct yep yep and so this one we wanted the surface treatment um, to be significant too. So another piece of that is you can't just do slurry a couple streets. They, they mob and they bring all their aggregates out of Gunnison because of uh, there's an aggregate chemistry thing that drives them to have to come out of Gunnison or the pits towards Gunnison. But um, we want to get at least a million, million and a half in surface treatment um, as our target this year. Um, so we were able to cover that zone, but because there's so much rebuilds going on, um, we're able to clean up some of the ones that were on the list from previous years that um, we didn't get to because of budget limitations. So you'll notice there are a couple outside of the zone um, this guy here and then this work down on um, Sunshine Road okay. um, that are outside of the typical zone but we wanted to build those up those, those were kind of stragglers from previous work and and they're also streets that you know if we don't catch them soon they're they're gonna go over that edge and become you know 5x the cost to repair so um, so that's why there are a couple out of the zone you'll see that on a street maintenance contract too we have one street that was outside of the zone 
um, for that similar reason of just catching them before they before they fail. Um, so before I move on to contracting, any questions on the map or process to get About there? How many miles of road are we resurfacing, not rebuilding, but just is just in this packet? I do not have that. I can get you that statistic, but I haven't just tabulated it. Um, it's significant. I mean, you're. Yeah, I, I don't want to take a guess because I'll be wrong. <laughs> um, so then on the contracting side of things, so this is kind of the same approach we had as, as last year would be a change order to the uh, service treatment contracts. When we bid this um, originally back in two years ago, um, 2022, um, we made part of that contract that it could be renewed um, for up to three years, I think it was. Um, three, yep. So the um, what we do is at each year kind of look at does, does the pricing work or no materials have gone up, what's your requested increase. Um, if it's in the neighborhood of the CPI, which in this case it was right at the CPI, um, and knowing asphalt and construction costs are going up way more than the CPI generally, we consider that a good deal and we're eager to take it. Um, because for the most part, I think if we were to rebid it, it would come back even higher. Um, uh, we've had really good luck with A1 chip seal. They were the, they've done the last two years. They're really good with their notifications and, and door hangers and door knocking and working with people on getting cars moved and things of the sort. So um, excited to yeah, recommend them again. Um, I, think, I think we have one more year under that program and then we'd have to rebid the project um, uh, probably in 2026. Um, but as far as the work itself, so um, slurry seals, if you remember, they take a little bit of time to cure, and so um, we work with them to kind of sequence it so you don't do two streets next to each other at the same time. So they'll, if there are two parallel streets that need a treatment, they'll do one one day and one two days later or something to give enough gap so that people can park their cars on a neighboring street and still be reasonably close to walk um, for that little bit of time that they, they won't be able to get out. Um, and then obviously, um, if there's emergency services, emergency call, they can just drive through it and then we'll deal with the, the fallout. And uh, we actually had that happen uh, like two years ago um, that an uh, ambulance needed to get through and it worked just fine. They have flaggers sta staged at all the kind of parts to help them through if there is an emergency. Um, the work would be taking place, they'd like to do it when it's hotter. Um, so usually they've been mobbing in June. It takes about two weeks to get all the work done. Um, and obviously our street maintenance contract will be going on separate and independent of that it, within this area as well. Um, as far as the dollars go, um, so uh, we'll dive into this deeper on our contractor street maintenance piece because of all the various pieces of um, the street maintenance, some alley work, uh, the independent sidewalk contract, some striping or some rehab that we do to follow up with the street maintenance contract to restripe roads that were milled or overlaid. You know, all those various pots go into that five, 5.25 million um, uh, that was budgeted. So um, I guess at this stage for this one, the important piece is, you know, this is paid out of that five. And then as we get closer to the end, we just start honing in on what's exactly available for all the various other aspects of what falls under the move mo umbrella, which again is, you know, sidewalk contracts, maintenance contracts, and service treatment, all, all of them kind of fall into that comprehensive street maintenance work. Um, so I think with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Scott, um, we're talking about, talk about sidewalks. We also have a separate amount of money that we have allocated in the budget for specifically for sidewalks. Yep, yep. So, so it's kind of added on to all these other components. Yeah, you have more or less four different pots for sidewalks. We have an ADA project that's specific towards, you know, ramp improvements and things of that sort. Um, 50-50 replacement program, which if people don't use it, we just use those to do straight sidewalk repair projects. Um, Streets has a $150,000 sidewalk maintenance project that they're, that's kind of zone centered um, that they'll be bringing for approval here before long. Um, and then within the MoveMo street maintenance contract, as we do those, we look for opportunities of missing link sidewalks, really bad fixable curbs, things of that sort um, that can improve the pedestrian experience or get rid of missing links. And we have a couple, quite a bit with this year's work. Um, is that part of what's going on on South Fifth, where they're doing the? Um, that was left over fifty fifty dollars. Um, they actually started. I think they started that one at the end of last year. Um, but that's working out well because that's actually the area that's going to see a mill and overlay. Um, and it was a, yeah, just a 
great one to get out of the way that had been giving the streets crews enough fits that they were um, had started that project um, and then that'll mesh really well with the mill and overlay that's coming in for all of fifth and fifth will fifth will be torn up a lot of the summer we're going to have um, a water line replacement from junction to san juan that goes with it we're going to finally um, start opportunity to fix the drainage at fifth and park um, so they have those little culverts there that are about yay big mm -hmm. and overtops the road every storm and and mud holes that aren't pedestrian friendly so um, we're actually going to run a storm line down to townsend um, to actually give that water somewhere to go within a storm drain system instead of being all surface drained. Um, so a lot of work going on in fifth, so that's just one of kind of three or four different little micro projects going on on fifth. Um, uh, so they should be done and out of the way um, by the time the, the larger move mode project comes in this year. So if there aren't any other questions, I will just wrap it up by saying this will come to council for a formal vote at which point we would accept public comment and that'll happen um the first meeting in march Great. thank you okay um then next would be the ogden road sidewalk extension contract award and so let's keep talking about streets and sidewalks with scott murphy <laughs> scott may let me just pull up the packet here to show you what we're talking about um, so we all dream of fixing Ogden end to end one of these days. Um, it's, it's an elephant um, and this is the first bite of, of that elephant. And so um, this is the catalyst for this product mostly is the apartment project going in there. Um, the residence is at Dry Cedar Creek immediately kind of northeast of the rec center um, going in on this map here that's on this parcel right here. Um, as part of that to kind of facilitate that's affordable housing state subsidized. Um, to help facilitate that, you know, one of the things they were looking for was partnerships from the community to kind of stay competitive with their state grants. Um, and then we've also had a long-term interest in um, improving, uh, starting to improve Ogden to make it a, a more multimodal street um, and more pedestrian friendly and safe. Uh, so, you know, kind of towards that end, um, you know, this is, this is working towards that goal it's a very small piece of it the larger overall product is you know 20 plus million but um, this is kind of geared towards making sure we have safe pedestrian connectivity for what will be um, you know relatively high density um, housing project but it also supports the long-term goals for eventual widening of, of Ogden um, so initially we dreamed of physically widening Ogden towards the south as part of this product to at least get the first part of a bike lane in, get full curb and gutter that whole way, and get the sidewalk put in. Um, we got into design. There's really no way to do that grade-wise and make that work um, structurally with the road section we have and to make it all drain and, and match the existing road that you either have to completely rebuild that whole stretch um, or do something that would then be sacrificed and have to be taken out when you do rebuild that whole stretch, which we also didn't want to do. Um, that's how we landed on the scope we have here. So the scope being presented is is more or less just the sidewalk um, connecting the two, um, but it's going to be in its eventual location. So we had to go through and design um, Ogden the whole way um, past the Lutzenheiser crossing here, which is a, also another upcoming project to get that bridge replaced and widened because it's undersized at the end of its life and um, obviously anybody who's driven by that little six inch shoulder there um, we're, we're eager to get that repaired or widened um, so that's another product that's coming but um, you know we had to make sure all of this mesh and work with it so we designed the whole thing for its eventual footprint which is um, in this case be there won't be a turn lane here because there's no other access points um, but you have a, a three lane in each direction bike lanes in each direction and the nice detached walks um, so we designed all of that horizontally and vertically and then are designing are putting in just a sidewalk now so we know that where it goes will match the eventual road design and won't have to be taken out at a later date and is, is built in its final configuration so for the most part it'll be construction of an embankment along this kind of southern side here the roadside drainage and the overhead power would remain um, kind of between the sidewalk and the street and then we have, do have a little bit of curb here to make that transition from attached walk to detached walk. Um, so with that um, reduction in scope came quite a bit of cost savings um, from what we budgeted because um, we were anticipating a, a larger product. And that budget would have worked well if we could have just widened the road and, and that's it. 
but by the time if you were to look at a full rebuild it was like 1.3 million which just you know isn't isn't the immediate need i mean this it'd still be a two-lane road with a detached sidewalk so if we can get the pedestrian benefit and not spend all of those dollars until you have a more meaningful connection when you can redo more of ogden it's just more cost effective is kind of how we landed on the scope here um so with that uh <laughs> best bid turnout we've had in a long time um uh eight bids um lowest was um haynes at 231 um, which we've worked with them before they did the woodgate um uh, widening in front of the rec center um occur with that they also built the water sports park so had um, good luck with them um, when you add in the um, survey stakeout for 13.5, that makes the total recommendation up at 245. Um, so compare that to the budget of 400, that um, has some savings, which I'd kind of alluded to that uh, when we were awarding tributary, which was a little bit over, that between these two we should average out, and, and we about did. Um, so. Is that one guy going to do a bullet path? <laughs> that was an interesting bid. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to them since. Um, what? happen there but yeah there's definitely a cluster and then and it's not uncommon to have outliers and in, in bidding um, I always kind of look at that center grouping and that's that's your number um, sometimes you end up really low too and that can scare you as well um, but uh, as far as traffic control on this one um, most work will be from the shoulder uh, there may be when they're working on some of that curb right against the road you might have um, flaggers so we told them they couldn't close Ogden but they you may see you know where they shift it down to one leg, one lane, and do alternating um, flaggers during select portions of work. But for the most part, it'll all be on the shoulder. They want to start early. The goal is to have this done before the um, apartments open, which we're hearing early summer-ish. Um, those things are somewhat fluid, but uh, should have no problem um, meeting that deadline. And again, um, well under the budget because of the scope reduction. So. That is an excellent explanation that I hope we can capture in some kind of maybe social media or an explanation on MoveMo, because I would imagine we're going to get lots of questions like, why, why are you doing a sidewalk but not the road? Or I thought the road was going to be wider. Or, I don't know. I just I think your explanation was really thorough of why we're doing what we're doing right now, what the plan is long term. Yeah, how can we still that down? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I just really great explanation. I can imagine pointing people towards listening to that in the future or capturing it some other way. Yeah, I think the cleanest we can when we do the when we start products, we usually do a press release to announce the start and maybe I can yeah, put a blurb in there. And you know, you alluding to that. Just like, if you'd say it just like that when you present it for at, for council action. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it gets picked up there as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah I can run through that. Just again. what the long-term plan is, why we're doing what we're doing now. And it just makes a lot. The explanation you just gave us makes a lot of sense. There we go. Start, <laughs> start the capital project blog. You got it. That being said, um, does council have any questions for Mr. Murphy? I just think that any sidewalks and roads that we improve in the city of Montrose is for the benefits of the residents. And sometimes there are inconveniences. <laughs> sometimes there are inconvenience, and I just hope they understand that uh, this is uh, the city doing their work. Yep, another historic amount of money put towards um, roads and sidewalks. So thanks. That reflects what council put as a priority. Any other questions? Okay, we'll see this also. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, in in working on that, have you guys checked, or are we seeing any additional traffic on Ogden with Hillcrest being shut down right now? Yeah, both Ogden and 6700 are elevated. Um, we don't have exact numbers, but I'd put it at pretty easily, probably 20, 25 percent um, elevated. Um, again, that. The roundabout will be open in June. And it's kind of funny, you know, people get used to new routes, maybe they'll stay. So I don't know, expect it to all go back, you know, um, with 6,700 open now. So it'll be interesting to see how it stabilizes. We've been wanting to do, if you remember in 2017, we did a speed and volume study citywide. Um, we want to do that again, but we, we don't want to, we can't do it during a detour. And so <laughs> we've been doing so many street projects that um, uh, we haven't gotten a representative year yet. Uh, so, you know, that stays on the radar. It'd be nice when kind of all this is said and done um, to figure out where the traffic is and where it's going. Um, that's probably going to be a couple years out because we also have 
big detours planned for the next several years of, of you know major construction. So um, we'll have exact numbers at some point, but definitely in, definitely elevated um, during these two. And that's that was one of the drivers for not allowing a closure. We didn't want closures on top of closures. When all those three projects are said and done, that's the day you retire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the other when one we, we do. When all is said and done, there's more to say and more to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. If there are any other questions, like I was saying, we will see this for a vote and at that point take public comment. Um, great. So those were our two agended discussion items. Um, City Council, any general discussion or items you want to bring up? Okay. Any staff comments for our work session? Oh, you want well, to I was just going to say that um, Mayor Bynum and I went to the CML conference, but we will give you everybody more of an update on that later tonight at our regular meeting. Any staff, anything else? Just a reminder, next Monday night, I want you just to keep talk, telling us about that so it's always on our minds. Yeah, we'll do that at the, the meeting tonight. Yep, yep. But there is state of the city. And we're gonna dress like Dave, right? We're gonna, we're gonna, we are going to. Yes, uh, you are. We're gonna wear our matching polos and, and we'll staff up a city council table for the open house part of the state of the city program should be a great program and we will talk more about it at tonight's meeting for the public's benefit what to expect and what time okay then i think we can um, adjourn with our work session um, we do have a special city council meeting following our work session so after folks um, finish up leaving the room or any comments they might need to make to an individual one-on-one, -on -one, then we'll reconvene for that special council meeting, which consists of an executive session. Thanks.